this last tip right here is a game changer for saving money and might not be something you would have expected what's up guys my name is stefan ashton today i'm going to go over my personal tips of what i did to save thousands upon thousands of gil when i first started playing final fantasy 14 online and now i want to share them all with you so you can benefit as well if you get any value out of this video then don't forget to limit break three that subscribe button down below I want to give a huge shout out to this week's supporter, Zane Lionheart. He is actually a fellow content creator here on YouTube and is actually my very first Patreon supporter. Thank you, Zane, for your support. I will put his link down below to his YouTube channel so you can go check his channel out if you'd like. If you didn't know, the very first time you support this channel, you get a special shout out in my next video. Link in the description to find out more about that. Let's jump in. Number one is my favorite tip, and I think a lot of people don't actually think about this, but you don't have to buy gear from the market board when starting off. You will get a lot of gear while you're playing through the story, and the only time I recommend buying things from the market board is usually just a few accessories to raise your item level. As you play through the story, the game does a really good job of keeping you geared for the most part between the main story quest and your job quest. Job quests will provide you with a lot of your updated gear between 1 and 49. I would say healers and tanks should worry about being geared to the dungeon a little bit more than DPS because if you're under geared then the damage you're taking as a tank can heavily increase and if you're under geared as a healer you'll find that your healing potency is very low so you might want to change out some pieces if you feel like you're struggling in a dungeon. You might find that that one earring or maybe your belt is about 15 to 20 item levels behind. And if you can find something under a thousand on the market board, then it's totally worth it. But don't go spending 5k, 10k on a level 30 piece of gear. Just check it periodically and replace the one or two things that are probably 10 or so item levels behind. This will stop you from spending all your hard earned gill straight out the gate. Number two. Level 15 above, you should only be using Poetics gear. I have a video specifically talking about Poetics gear linked above and below to get a more in-depth explanation, but essentially, level 50 Poetics gear will take you through a post Realm Reborn and Heaven's Ward. Level 60 Poetics gear will take you through Stormblood, and level 70's Poetics gear will take you through Shadowbringers. You do not need to update your Poetics gear as the item level is higher than the final few dungeons of each expansion. Some will say that you can get an even higher level item gear near the end of each expansion from the few dungeons, but it's so minuscule and changed that you don't need to worry about changing it out. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. The very last dungeon in A Realm Reborn or Heaven's Ward is level 59 and it requires an item level of 120. The level 50 poetics gear that you can get at the very beginning of the expansion is item level 130. So the item level 130 will keep you well above the requirements for all of the dungeons through the expansion. By the time you need to upgrade, you will have it available to you after completing the expansion. This is why Poetics Gear is king when leveling your main job and alt jobs. You can get these from special vendors in each expansion or in the main cities, but they will not be available in the main cities until you have completed that expansion. I don't necessarily want to ruin it, so I'm not going to have the city names or anything like that, but I will say once you get to level 50, just look up level 50 poetics and it will tell you which vendor to get them from or just comment on the video and I will tell you in a super secret comment maybe. Number three. Well, if you're saving money by using poetics gear, then what do we do with the dungeon gear or main quest reward gear? Well, I'm glad you asked. First off, I'm going to say that you always need to be rolling on your gear. There is no reason to pass on gear because there are ways to use that gear later. So if you don't want to necessarily need something, you can always greet it and anyone who needs it can still get it if you truly feel that bad. This has been a long conversation in the comments on my other videos. But like I showed you in tip number two, that you don't really need dungeon gear, that they should be using poetics gear. So you can just gracefully and kindly point them to this video so then they're not struggling with dungeon gear. This is why we have also a grand company that you unlock with the main story quest. 
When you level your grand company in squadrons, you can unlock expert deliveries. I have the video linked here. That allows you to turn in dungeon gears for seals, grand company seals, to which you can then turn those seals in for ventures, cordials, glamour prisms, etc., etc. That other video explains it. And that's what you do with dungeon gear. But what do we do with the main quest story gear? Well, you can actually sell this gear for tons of guild. There are tons of players out there who don't know to use poetics or they just want to update a certain piece and don't want to farm poetics to get poetics gear. You can sometimes sell this gear from anywhere between 5k to 50k depending on the market. So make sure to check the gear through your retainer to see how much it sells for. You can do this by just going to your retainer, clicking the list item and this button here, adjust the price to check the prices. And you can check the prices of all the other things in your inventory and see if something sells for quite a lot of money that you might be having in your inventory. Really great way to not only save money, but also to make money. This last tip right here is a game changer for saving money and might not be something you would have expected, but that is setting up two-factor authentication for your account when logging in. The reason for this is when you set this up, Final Fantasy XIV will give you a free teleport location that you can register in-game. Yes, absolutely free. The more amazing thing about this is you can change this location as many times as you want. This is important when you get to a certain place that you'll probably have to teleport back to all the time. Example, maybe when you get to Heaven's Ward and you'll be teleporting back to the main city a lot. You can register it as a free destination and save yourself tons of gil for teleporting back every single time. I know a lot of people are not doing this and honestly this will save you thousands upon thousands of gil and it should be something you should implement immediately. Another reason for doing this is with so many players flocking to Final Fantasy XIV, scammers, hackers, and just not good-hearted people are trying to get people's information, and this protects your account from anyone getting into it. You can do this by going to the Final Fantasy XIV MOG station, which is pretty much our account management area for Final Fantasy XIV. Once you log in, you go to the Square Enix account settings and go to one-time password to set up. You either need a key ring, which I'm really not quite sure what that is, or use your iPhone or Android software app, which is what I use. You will be shown an emergency password. Just have that saved somewhere on a file on your phone or on your computer just in case. But once activated, every time you log in, you'll just have to get a one-time password from your app in order to log in. This is the absolute best way to protect your account from hackers and losing your progress. It doesn't happen often, but I have heard some horror stories of people losing everything and not being able to get it back. Plus, obviously Square Enix supports this as we can tell by them giving us a free destination in game. So I'm guessing they want you to do it too. I want to thank you all for watching my video. I also want to thank my Patreon sponsors here who protect this YouTube channel by keeping it safe from the ever-changing algorithm. If you want to connect with me or support my channel, I have my link tree down below that can point you in the right direction. As always, if you want to keep watching Final Fantasy 14 videos, you can click here.